Hello and welcome to pre-class 3 where we're going to be looking at growth and homeostasis of bones. Of course this is part of module 5. We've already had two other pre-classes. Uh, one where we introduced cartilage and bone, one where we looked at the anatomy of bones and joints and then this one as I say is about bone growth and then at the end homeostasis of bones. Now this first part is about ossification of bones. So the learning objective for this part is that you should be able to describe and compare and contrast endochondral and intramembranous ossification. What do they actually mean, those terms? So how do these bones form? Well, they form through these two processes, intramembranous and endochondral ossification. So if we sort of break down those words, intra means within. Membranous obviously is referring to a membrane, so it's a within a membrane bone formation. And endochondral means, endo means within, chondral, if you remember, refers to cartilage, so it's within cartilage bone formation. So these are the two different types of um, ossification bone formation that takes place to actually form our skeletons. So we're going to actually look at the one which is most common, uh, first of all, which is endochondral ossification, and then at the end we'll have a quick look at intramembranous ossification, which is a bit rarer um, in the, the human skeleton. So in this endochondral ossification, uh, bone forms on the surface of a hyaline cartilage model. So during embryonic development, the first few, few months of development, we get our primitive connective tissue, which is known as mesenchyme. We might have run into that word before. Um, it's just sort of a primitive fetal uh, connective tissue. These cells uh, coalesce, they differentiate, so this is sort of stem cell-like connective tissue cells, and then they differentiate into chondroblasts and chondrocytes, and we get these little cartilage models forming, which is little replicants of uh, what the actual bone tissue is going to look like. They undergo lots of mitosis, so the bones grow, and we end up with this sort of appearance. So this looks like cartilage with the matrix. Here's our chondrocytes within our lacunae. And you can see um, evidence of uh, mitosis, lots of in interstitial growth taking place within this cartilage. Now you also remember that on the outside of cartilage, particularly hyaline and uh, el elastic cartilage, but here this is hyaline cartilage, uh, we have the perichondrium. And if you remember, the perichondrium is made up of the two layers, an outer fibrous layer of dense irregular connective tissue and an inner chondrogenic layer, which is where we get our stem cells. So here um, we get our little um, hyaline cartilage template which forms first. Um, here they're demonstrating that these are uh, chondrocytes which are hypertrophic, which means they've enlarged. You can see they're quite big there. It's a typical feature of um, cartilage which is undergoing rapid growth and differentiation. So what happens is um, with bone growth, after that hyaline cartilage model is formed, um, the cells within the uh, perichondrium differentiate and form a periosteum. And so those cells on the lining differentiate from becoming, uh, rather than becoming new chondroblasts, they become new osteoblasts. And so they begin to secrete osteoid, which then becomes mineralized, and we get this little bony collar forming around the outside of the bone here, around the diaphysis region that's going to form the shaft of our bone or the diaphysis. So we get this formation of this bony collar around the hyaline cartilage model because our um, uh, perichondrium is differentiated into periosteum and then um, the um, osteoblasts are formed, laid down bone matrix and that's become mineralized. Now we know that um, in order for blood supply for, for the cartilage we need that perichondrium and diffusion works through this cartilage matrix but when you actually have this bony collar we lose our ability to diffuse our nutrients and wastes uh, through the cartilage matrix so the cells which are furthest away from that blood supply then begin to die and so we end up with this little hole in the middle, uh, which is going to form what's known as our primary ossification center. This is where the first bit of bone growth is actually going to take place within the bone, within the endochondral, so within the cartilage. So diffusion doesn't work anymore. The cells in the middle are starved of oxygen and nutrients. They actually go undergo um, 
death, and then they eventually um, form this space. We've got this deteriorating cartilage matrix uh, taking place here. So what then happens is um, the cartilage begins to die in this region where the bony collar forms, um, which then progressively calcifies, it dies in the middle, and then is invaded by a bud of stem cells, which forms the primary ossification center. So a blood vessel begins to uh, penetrate through this um, bony collar, through this uh, little bit of cartilage, and into this degenerating cartilage matrix and as it does, it carries with it um, this um, bud of um, stem cells, which then transform into osteoblasts on the inside of um, this, you know, what's going to be the developing diaphysis or the shaft of the bone. So then these cells begin to lay down um, new bone matrix osteoid, which gets mineralized. Again, it affects diffusion, so all of this cartilage begins to degenerate um, around that area. And then at the same time, this bony collar begins to extend up towards the epiphysis uh, on either side, the epiphysis sees. Um, so we get this invasion of internal cavities by the periosteal bud um, and spongy bone formation. So the blood vessel comes in, it carries with it these new bone cells, they begin to lay down new matrix, the cartilage dies, and upon that um, base of that cartilage matrix, we get new bone um, extracellular material being, being formed. So this region here, the diaphysis, forms the primary ossification center, and then over time what we'll see is the development of two secondary centers of ossification. And these are going to take place within the epiphyses, uh, the proximal and the distal epiphyses. Um, so primary center of ossification within the diaphysis, secondary centers within the epiphyses. So again, this is just shown, this is from the textbook. So here we've got our bony collar forming uh, in our diaphysis. Our cartilage matrix uh, degenerates. We've got our blood vessel bringing in this periosteal bud. We get bone formation in our primary ossification center. Um, and we can see that there. Um, we've got our diaphysis medullary cavity um, forming here. We've got our compact bone and a little bit of spongy bone in this region here. So bone formation continues, spreads along the now developing diaphysis. The dead cartilage cells are lost, leaving a space, which is going to form the medullary or the marrow, marrow cavity. And then this gets uh, filled with red marrow, and then we know that over time that red marrow gets replaced by yellow marrow with age, such that the red marrow then becomes isolated to the um, epiphyseal regions, the heads of the bones. So as I mentioned, the bony collar then extends up near the epiphysis, and of course the same sort of thing happens. We lose our um, diffusion within the center here because these are furthest away from the blood supply. This cartilage matrix degenerates. The periosteum sends in a bud of blood vessels carrying the periosteal bud, which then forms this secondary center of ossification. So we've got that happening at both epiphyses. So I, I kind of like to think of it, and this is probably going to sound a little bit weird, but we get this sort of primary um, burst of, of bone formation in the shaft. So it sort of explodes and then begins, that explosion continues along the length of the, the diaphysis, sort of extending along. And then we get these two uh, secondary explosions in the heads of the bones. And then they expand out and get basically replace that cartilage uh, with bone. Um, it completely replaces all bone except for um, at the end of that process we're left with these sort of zones of cartilage. Um, we've got two, two major zones at either end. One of these zones is of course the head of the bone or the articular surface of the bone remains as that hyaline cartilage and that forms the articular cartilage. So that's one zone of cartilage that remains and the second zone of cartilage that remains behind is this region here, which is known as the epiphyseal growth plate. So this is a really important uh, feature that enables us to get taller, which we'll talk about in the second part of the um, of of this uh, pre-class pre-class three. So again, we've got a, a explosion happening within the diaphysis that it runs the length of the diaphysis. We get our secondary explosions of bone formation happening in the epiphyses. They expand outwards, um, and then we get these uh, 
basically four zones if we've got you know a long bone we've got two articular cartilages forming and then we've got two growth plates forming at um, either end there so two remnants of hyaline cartilage, articular cartilage on the surface, and the epiphyseal growth plates between the epiphysis and the diaphysis. Now, this region of the bone is sometimes referred to as the metaphysis, which is basically the shoulder of the bone, and then the head sits on the shoulders. Um, so the epiphysis sits on the metaphysis, which then connects with the diaphysis. So this is a, a little bit of a new term there, which we haven't really introduced before. So we have these zones of remnant hyaline cartilage from this um, endochondral ossification. And so this representing down here, we can see where the bones formed and we've got our remnant hyaline cartilage, which will eventually get replaced by bone matrix. So this is a... Um, uh, histological section, this is where we've used a special stain called a trichrome stain. In this case, uh, down here, we've got red for muscle, uh, blue is collagen, um, and, um, and then we've got some red cells out here as well. So those are the main colours. So here, this is the knee joint, so the, here's the uh, femur, so this is the end of the femur. Here's the tibia which is the big bone in the, the leg. Um, and then we've got the fibula down here. And you can actually see we this is this process has actually taken place. So here's our diaphysis of the femur. We've got our compact bone here. We've got the marrow cavity here. And then we've got our secondary uh, ossification center has already taken place. We've got spongy bone in this head of the region, head of the bone here, the epiphysis. And then this region here, this is actually the articular cartilage. And so here's the articular cartilage of the tibia and then this region here this is the epiphyseal growth plate this enables bones to grow longer and then by the time you're about 18 uh, 19 or so this eventually gets replaced by bone and you're no longer able to get any taller and we'll talk, as I say we'll talk more about that uh, a little bit uh, later in the next part again just to reminding you of some of these other features we've got meniscus here within the knee joint we've got our uh, uh, synovial capsule and then the internal structure of the synovial capsule is of course the synovial membrane so that produces the synovial fluid and here we've got the synovial space or the synovial cavity so those are the parts of the synovial joints which you might remember from the last pre-class so again as I said eventually at around 18 years of age the cartilage within the growth plates is completely replaced by bone so there's no more growth and a line is left behind where the growth plate was and this is referred to as the epiphyseal line. So originally this was the growth plate which was cartilage and then that completely gets replaced by uh, bone and then we end up with this little line where that growth plate used to be and you can see this in this radiograph here. Uh, so this is the shoulder joint, here we've got the scapula. And here we've got the humerus, we've got the articulating, remember the ball and socket joint, and on the surface here we've got our articular cartilage on the articular surface which would exist here. So an interesting feature is that cartilage is radio-opaque. That means that the x-rays pass right through. And so where there's regions, uh, where there's cartilage, these appear black on film. So that you can actually track development and growth of the skeleton by radiography. So here we've got a x-ray from a one-month-old, a one-year-old, a 10-year-old, and then a 20-year-old, so an adult here. And you can see it looks like there's lots of black spaces in between these bones. You can see these little lines here, these are where the growth plates are. You can see the wrist bones here haven't quite fully formed. And then at one year old, you can definitely see where the growth plates are. Um, and then 10 years old, you can still see the growth plates, but then by the time of 20 years old, you can just see these little lines where they represent those growth plates, these epiphyseal lines. So the second type of bone growth that takes place in the human body is known as intramembranous ossification. So this means development of a new bone in connective tissue, and this is usually in embryonic connective tissue. And we see this particularly in the flat bones of the skull. So we see the skull, um, the clavicle is also undergoes intramembranous ossification, and the mandible. So they're showing these different bones um, uh, undertake, undergoing intramembranous ossification here. So here we've got our primitive connective tissue, which is the mesenchymal cells. These are stem cells. 
they differentiate and form um, osteoblasts. And they form these little islands and they begin to secrete osteoid. You can see them beginning to get um, trapped within the osteoid that gets mineralized. They become osteocytes. Eventually these little pockets within this connective tissue, this primitive connective tissue, um, fuse up and they uh, eventually connect to each other. They've got blood vessels trapped in between and we end up with our bone forming, with our uh, you can see a line of osteoblasts on the outside there. They lay down new more uh, osteoid that gets replaced. Here we get some um, osteocytes here. Um, so we've got osteocytes within lacuna, and then we end up with our bone tissue at the end, um, so forming our skull bones. So here the, in this histological section, we can see this line of osteoblasts and they lay down the new osteoid and then this very uh, pink matrix here this is the mineralized bone and then we've got our um, blood vessels uh, within this region here and so this um, a couple of uh, sections um, not sections, I beg your pardon, there's a couple of photographs of um, fetuses which have been, uh, the bones have been stained red, um, so you can see uh, 10 weeks of development, in almost none, no skull development, you can see a little bit of uh, intramembranous ossification here, and then we've got our endochondral ossification taking place in uh, some of the uh, lower legs but not in the heads of the bones so we've got our primary ossification centers and then at 16 weeks of development uh, uh, flat bones of the skull are formed by intramembranous ossification there's still spaces in between where the sutures are going to grow and of course these are known as fontanelles and that enables the brain to expand without the brain being uh, damaged and then we can actually see now that we've got some secondary ossification taking place in these long bones and you can see some of the bones forming in the feet there so that's it for part one. So please now complete module five, pre-class three, part one quiz to test your understanding of this section. Then depending upon how you did in the quiz, either progress to part two or re-review this first part if your quiz didn't go so well. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in part two.